BRB. It's better in that there's no stain, but my bangs, I'm telling you, my sweet, sweet hairdresser just had a baby and I miss her. I miss her so much it hurts. I can do it myself. I can do it myself. I've done it before. It's very hit or miss. I can cut my bangs myself. Um, my track record is like 50-50 about whether or not it turns out well. I've also cut my kid's hair a ton and my husband's hair a little bit. Yeah, again, my, my track record is about mid, middle of the road. So that's why I'm hesitant to do it myself. But anyways, I can just live like this. I can live like this. There are people who live like this. Tonight will be the night that I will fall for you over again. Don't make me change my mind. I, you know, it. Okay, we're just gonna move on. We're just gonna move on. Today, I'm gonna be sharing everything that I thrifted at the beach. I love to thrift. I really love to thrift, but I try not to do it too much because uh, at least for me, there is such a thing as too much thrifting. I find that I can bring in just as much stuff that way as the other conventional way, you know, buying stuff new. So <laughs> I, I find that I do have to be mindful basically about how much I'm actually going out thrifting. And then when I'm actually in the store, I try to be mindful about what I'm choosing. But whenever we're at the beach, I do like to thrift. There's a couple of places that, you know, whenever I'm in a place that I'm not normally, it's nice to see what they have and I give myself a little bit more leeway. So I would say that we probably went to every single thrift store antique shop that was in the vicinity, almost. And I found a couple of treasures. So there's a little bit of everything here, home goods, clothing, kids stuff, books, and I'm just gonna, share it all. I'm just going to share it all. Okay, let's begin. Okay, I think we are going to go in the following order. We're going to do home goods and then clothing and then books and then kids clothes. Motherhood is a facet of my channel just because it is a facet of my life, but it's not really a big emphasis. So I know probably not all of you are interested in that. So I'll leave the kids stuff, kids books, kids clothes till the end of the video. And that way you can stay if you're interested. And if not, you'll see everything that you wanna see right here at the beginning. Here we go. Home goods, probably my favorite thing to thrift because there's no sizing involved. One size fits all. That's a good feeling and we like it. First things first. Actually, the very first thing that I thrifted is this little butter knife. I love the way that the handle was kind of, I don't even know what it's made of. Perhaps wood, but maybe something ceramic, ivory. I hope it's not ivory, but you know, it's nice. I like, I like the color, I like the feel, I like the weight in my hand. Most of thrifting, you know, it's just a feeling and I really like the feeling of this. It says on it, Thomas McKellen Limited Belfast, restless. So anyways, nice little butter knife. I really enjoy having like an eclectic kitchen collection and it's something that takes a lot of time uh, because it takes time to collect things. So I have sets of silverware that go together Two, I think one that I thrifted, one that was given to us by my husband's parents, but I do like to slowly collect all the other kind of kitcheny stuff. So this is something that I thrifted. It probably was 75 cents. Next thing that I thrifted is this little pitcher. I thrifted it for $2.95. It's just sweet. I, I had a little tea party with my girls the other day and we didn't have anything to put the milk in, nothing to put the milk and cream in. And so I was just keeping my eye out for something like that. And it's not necessarily something you have to have. We only have occasional tea parties, but I don't have very many pitchers, just one, I think that's like a larger one and then nothing for like a smaller, so. I found this one. I love the color. As you guys know, it's like one of my favorite colors in the world. And I just loved the speckled quality. I loved the little detail around the rim. And I mean, the price was right, $2.95. I don't really know what the bottom means. If anyone is aware, 24N, it means nothing to me, but I like it. Okay, next up in home goods, this cookie cutter still in the package 
Ooh, ah. I do have a good amount of cookie cutters. Most of them are Christmas related or smaller. I do like to bake and I do it a good amount. I like to bake things in the everyday and then also for like my kids' parties or for the holidays, et cetera, et cetera. Any chance that I get to make a cookie and eat a cookie, I'm gonna take it, you know what I mean? Um, I didn't have any big ones and I didn't have any big ones that weren't Santa Clauses or angels. Snatched it up, it was like 50 cents. Another thing that I thrifted was this little basket. I love a basket. I'm probably going to be taking you guys through some of my favorite like thrifted home goods soon coming up. We shall see when the video happens, but you will see from that video that I love a basket. I love a little basket with a top in particular. So my husband actually brought this to me and then he opened it. And it's got coasters in it. It's got coasters, which we don't have any coasters. We're watering people. We like a good patina. So anyways, but it came with all these cute coasters and I figured it's nice to have a place to store them. The reason I've never gotten coasters in the past is they can kind of feel like, I don't know, they're just everywhere. They're just, they just end up everywhere. And I like this containment aspect, you know, while also looking very cute. And I got them for $2. Next up, I'm saving the best thing for last, by the way. My favorite thing. Okay, next up is this bowl. Very simple, probably to most of you looks like nothing special, but there is this brand called Made In, I believe, and they have a kitchen collection, a dish collection that has this type of red rim around it. And it's pretty expensive, not something that I can afford right now. And so when I saw this, I was like, hey, this is the exact same feel. It's Corel. It was 95 cents and I just thought, okay, so now I know that this exists, this, this dish line from Corel and maybe I could thrift some more pieces of it and give myself that made in feeling um, on a budget. You guys probably don't know this, but I love a pop of primary color in my home in particular. We redid our kitchen a couple of years ago and in place of a kitchen island, we got this like work table essentially and it has these like blue legs. So I thought it'd be fun to have some other primary colors going on in the kitchen as well. Okay, last but not least when it comes to homeware is this bowl. It's this nice ceramic little bowl. It's got these hand painted oranges on it. I love freshly squeezed orange juice. And when I visited my brother and sister-in-law in California, they have a couple of orange trees in their backyard. And almost every day we would make freshly squeezed orange juice. So this just makes me think of that time. I just love a bowl. I love a bowl. I love a little object to put even smaller objects inside. I got this for $3. This was $3. I probably would have bought it for more than that. It was quite a nice little find. And I think I'm probably gonna put my most used jewelry in it. Okay, that is it for homewares, and now we're gonna get into clothes for moi. First things first is a very noisy object. It's this vintage Columbia windbreaker. Do my bangs look better now? Because I think they might look better. Sneaking suspicion that this is better than what was happening before. What if I just went on the whole, <laughs> what if I just continued the whole video this way? Please subscribe. Yeah, it's just this nice windbreaker, really, really great condition, kind of has this color blocking going on. And I love a good vintagey piece, but that is still wearable, you know? I mean, this is probably only from the late 80s, early 90s and super applicable to my life. I don't have anything like this, so I also like the functionality aspect of it. I probably wouldn't have gotten it if I did have something that I was already using, but the amount of times that I like, run out to play with the kids in the rain and just need something waterproof to flow, to flow on. I just need something waterproof to throw on. Felt like a good one. My husband actually found this and brought this to me in the store and I made the command decision to purchase. Okay, next up, this. Little tea. This is from Rip Curl, and I got it at the same place that I got my little Belfast butter knife. 
Um, but I just like the detail on it. These little sleeves. I liked the color. I liked the crop. If you've been here for any amount of time, you know that I have a go-to silhouette in tops and it's mostly cropped. So t-shirts are one of those things that I feel like wear out pretty quickly. I just have a handful of them and then I wear them, wear them, wear them, wear them until they are, you know, grimy and gross in places and places, get holes, all the things. And so it's nice to get those from the thrift store because I'm only paying a dollar or two for them. And then I can just wear them to death, then transfer them to my PJs, wear them a little more to death and then get rid of them. This is a simple one, but I know I'll get a lot of use out of it. Okay, next up are these little slides. These are the brand Coconuts Matisse, Coconuts by Matisse. I feel like I have another pair of slides or like mules from this same brand. They have a very similar feeling at least. And they are just this suede upper in this kind of yellowy color. And I really, really like them. I want to incorporate a little bit more color into my wardrobe, but in a slow and intentional way. And I think that one of the keys for me, one of the things that I learned when I did my, I don't know, uh, what's it called? 75 hard style challenge. I learned that I was trying to incorporate a lot of color. That was one of my goals when I did that challenge, but I was doing it in the wrong way for me. I was trying to incorporate color up here and in my clothing. And I think that the key might be incorporating it in smaller ways in shoes and purses and hats and things like that. The accessories being the pop and being smaller than the majority of the outfit. I think that will lead me to wear color a lot more, but also still feel like myself. You know, which I mean, that's kind of the whole point of personal style, at least to me. I really, really like these. They're super comfortable because of the top being suede. And I feel like they'll add a very subtle, but still kind of neutral pop of color. A little pop of yellow, chartreuse almost. A cousin to chartreuse, if you will, are these slides. And they were $1.98, $1.98. So I'm going to clean them up and I will wear them. And last but not least for clothes for me is this dress. It's American Eagle and it's just the sweetest thing I've ever seen. And we were just about to leave and I caught this fabric like out of the corner of my eye and I love a dainty floral. I really do, I really, really do. And I, I saw this in the racks and I, and I just, and it was, a type of thing that I like and a type of size that fits me. And it was just, it was just nice. It was just a nice little treat at the end of a shopping trip. Again, I try to be really careful and mindful about the clothes that I'm bringing in right now. I'm not out trying to get things that I already have unless there's really a need there. And so this just kind of felt sweet and fun because I don't have anything like it, but I know that I'll get a lot of use out of it. So just the sweetness, it's got this weight to the fabric. Like this is definitely older American Eagle. It has some solidity to it. Like what, I don't know. I just feel like even fast fashion 20 years ago is not like fast fashion today. The fabric, I don't know, there, there's something there. There's something to it. It's not gonna just get threadbare in two seconds. And I love this kind of crinkly, gauzy material that it's made of, just so good. Little petite flowers, little tie, long sleeve, scoop neck. <laughs> and even the detail, like these little buttons, little buttons, flouncy skirt, I love. I love and I purchase probably for five dollars at Goodwill. Goodwill by the beach, baby. Now we're going to get into books, kids books. It's kids books because I am a homeschool mom. So I'm always <laughs> looking for kids books. I mean, I think that I would be looking for kids books even if I didn't homeschool, but particularly because of homeschool, am I looking for books is the sentence as I have chosen to say it. Okay. I'm just smiling because I stuffed a bunch of my kids art from the beach. Let me just show you. Please indulge me for one moment for a brief look at my kids art. I just cannot. Can you? Crabs and shells. Crabs and shells. A beach scene. Another similar but different beach scene. As a mom, what are you to do? What are you to do with this mermaid? This mermaid, she's having a great time. 
is she having a great time? It's unclear whether she's having a great time or if she's being pulled away by a fisherman's net of some kind. So anyways, all that's shoved in there and it's super sweet. Shoved inside this book, The Great World Tour. This is from Usborne, Usborne, I don't know how you say that. Usborne. This book is kind of fun because you start at the airport and you're traveling with your great aunt something or other great aunt marigold and there's all these things that you can find in the picture and then there's like um there's all these things that you can find in the picture and then down here at the bottom let's just hope that that's coming together for us all i'm not here Look at the book. At the corner, there's like a little plane and a bus and a train pattern. And you look for that pattern on the subsequent pages to find out where you're flying to. And so they kind of take you on a tour, but you're not supposed to go in the order of the book. You're supposed to go in the order that they lead you to. So I think my kids will love looking through that and trying to find the different things that they tell you to find while also learning a bit of something about a particular culture, a particular landscape. I think that that's nice. I think my five-year-old will especially enjoy this. We kind of do an interest-led homeschool and so I always ask my kids what do you want to learn about this year and my five going on six-year-old requested crystals and bones and science. Those were her three requests. Crystals though, I found a book on crystals when I was thrifting, so had to snatch that up. We're gonna get a bunch from the library as well, but how often do you find a book on crystals? Making crystals, Jan and Sam making crystals. Look at them, look at them. What a crystal isn't, crystal shapes, crystal cleavage, crystal colors. It's just like a science close-up book on crystals. Next thing that I found is this little book from the 40s, 30s or 40s. It's White Snow, Bright Snow by Alvin Tresselt. Tresselt? I just really like the pictures in here, the style of illustration, really drew me in. It's just all about the winter coming and the snow. We don't get a lot of snow around here, so it's nice for my kids to look at it in a book. Like I mentioned, my oldest is really into science. She wants to learn about that this year. And every time we ask her, do you want to do a gymnastics class or do you want to maybe play soccer? She says, no, I want to be a scientist when I grow up. So I found this book. It's called Charlotte the Scientist Finds a Cure. And it's all about this little bunny that notices everyone getting sick. And so she comes up with a hypothesis and she kind of goes through the scientific method a little bit, you know, kid level, young kid level scientific method, and then figures out what's wrong as a result of doing her experiment. And then she finds a cure, obviously it's in the title. It's not a giveaway, she finds a cure. So yeah, my oldest is definitely into this. And what I like about it too, is that in the back, there's like a glossary. So they talk about the different words that they use in the book and what they mean, clinical trial, compendium, consumption, contaminate. It's kind of fun and kind of a nice way for her to dip her toes into all of that science stuff in the form of a story. Another few books that I found I'm gonna use during our kind of fall season. Maybe we'll do Life Cycle of a Pumpkin, something like that during the fall and we can go to Pumpkin Patch. We can do all the looking at the insides and carving and looking at the seeds and bring it all together in a fall themed unit study. So it's loose. I haven't really planned out the fall yet. We're just focused on our current unit study, which is oceans and it's so much fun. Anyways, but these are for the fall from seed to pumpkin which basically I imagine takes you through the life cycle of a pumpkin and how they grow, what you need to make them grow, which again, this is just great for the kids learning about plants in general. They're super young. This is definitely at their level and what they, what they need to know. Not too much that's gonna go over their head in this book, which is great. It really covers everything. And then I also got to go alongside it, Pumpkin Pumpkin, which I've heard a lot of good things about this book, New York Academy of Sciences Children's Book Award. Yep, that sounds about right. It's about a little boy who plants a pumpkin and watches it grow. I love the illustrations in here. And then what's cool about this book is it's a little big book plus. Never heard of that before, but basically it has the story and it also has like a traditional song, a photo essay about pumpkins, a class growing project and a recipe. We might use that, be fun. And then another little thing for our fall unit will be spiders. Backyard books, are you a spider? You're a spider if your mother laid eggs and wrapped them in a special silk pouch. You look perfect, you have a tiny waist and eight hairy legs. Am I a spider? I don't have a tiny waist, but I have hairy legs. Does that count? Just another way to bring in some learning. And I think that this is something we'll use during that unit study whenever it is that I 
come up with it. Another couple of classics that I found, I'm always kind of on the lookout for certain, I don't know, is it called like living books? Just books that are actually good, actually well-written and um, stories that adults can also appreciate. So there's this one, it's called Miss Rumpheus by Barbara Cooney. And I've heard a lot of things about this story. I do think that this has won several awards. I believe it is about a woman who is a naturalist. There's a theme about conserving nature and taking care of it, which is definitely something that we enjoy writing through our studies. Something that I want my kids to know about, taking care of our earth. And then another classic, Make Way for Ducklings. We love all the Robert McCloskey books. He's the one who wrote Blueberries for Sal, One Morning in Maine, and we just didn't happen to own this one, Caldecott Award book. If you're like me and you're always looking for books for your kids and you're just not sure of what is good, one thing that I always do other than actually just looking at books lists and kind of holding that information in my head when I go thrifting. Another thing that I like to do is just look for things that have won awards. It's not a foolproof method because <laughs> there are things that have won awards that I maybe wouldn't want my kids to read. I'm not really sure. And it may not be age appropriate, stuff like that. It's not a foolproof method, but like the Caldecott Book Award, the Newbery Medal, all of those, it can be a sign that the books are well-written and stories worth reading. If you do Imagination Library and you're going to donate your kids' books after, I recommend that you take off this little sticker because now I see like the kid's name and the, the parent's name and their address on this book and anyone could purchase it. So if you guys do the Dolly Parton Imagination Library, don't forget to like scratch out their name with like Sharpie or take off the, the thing because I don't like... I don't like that that information is out there. Yeah, another thing that we got a couple of are like more, um, I don't know, value related books, like values that we wanna teach our kids. So we got a couple books about bullying, Llama Llama and the Bully Goat and Just a Bully, which is those like critters. I do wanna say that value books are not all created equal. And sometimes I'm like, what are you saying? What are you, <laughs> what, is the, what is the message at the end of this book? So I would say with these ones, for instance, I didn't pre-read them after we got them. I mean, we just thrifted them. This was 45 cents and this was similar price range, you know, like a dollar or less. And so just, I got them because I do know we like Llama Llama books and I like the Critter books. I, I, they're not created equal. <laughs> they're not created equal. This one at the end of it, the result was that the little sister pushed the bully and basically like bullied him back and took care of her brother, took care of her brother in that way. And that's not really exactly what we want to be teaching our kids about, about bullying. We did, I didn't love that, that at the end of this, the result was that the bully ended up getting bullied by the sister, you know, so not great, not as great. Don't really recommend. Um, but this one was really good. Llama Llama and the Bully Goat. It was a kid who was doing things that were bullying for sure. But then in the end, he was kind of incorporated back into the group and there was repair involved. He didn't just end up as a pariah, you know, at the end of the book because he bullied and you can never come back from that. You can never come back from doing bad things. That's not true. That's not our experience. That's not what we want to teach our kids. And so I really liked that at the end of this, the author illustrated a way for that bully to be integrated back into the group. This is how we can repair and heal. So I like that a lot. And then we also got another value-based book, Berenstein Bears and the Truth. We have a couple of these ones. And my kid is always asking me like, to read her the names of every single book and she wants them all, <laughs> you know? I mean, collect them all. It's like on here on purpose, but we do like the Berenstain Bears in general. And so this is about them breaking a lamp. I wish that the repair in this was a little bit better, a little bit clearer, that there was a little bit more ownership of the thing that they did wrong, but it's good as a starting point because most books, they're never gonna be all encompassing. They're never gonna say everything that you wanna say. They're never going to include everything that you want your kid to know about a certain thing, but they can be conversation starters. So we can talk about lying. We can talk about how we're gonna handle it in our family, you know, and, and what's going on. And, and also it just helps them identify. When we, the first time we read it, my kid said, they're not telling the truth. They're not telling the truth, you know? And so then we can just go into all of the things that are surrounded with that and so that's why i like that one last but not least for this kids book haul is this one i don't even know who wrote it it's called spring summer autumn winter and again just a nice little homeschool resource it was published let's see in 1982 can you tell it just goes into the different seasons 
in a way, I have a three and a half year old, in a way that I feel like she would be able to really appreciate and understand, but also being something that is interesting to look at for my older child as well. And obviously they go into all the seasons in this one. All right, that is all the books. And now I'm gonna do kids clothing. I pretty much thrift all of my kids clothes. And so I'm constantly kind of on the hunt because I can't just wait until they need clothes. For me, that's not how thrifting works. If I'm ever at a thrift store, I am looking for the things that I know that they'll be needing in the coming up seasons. And then we have a bin for each child where I keep either the stuff that's being passed along from the ones who are older, or I keep the stuff that I've already thrifted in there for the season that's to come. So this is just a smorgasbord, smorgasbord, smorgasbord. No, let's not do that. This is just a mix of, um, a bunch of different things that I know each of my kids will be needing. I have three kids. So, so there's this sweater for my oldest. It's that kind of chenille material, super cozy and comfy and oversized, which I think she'll love. I also got these pajama pants for her. They are so fun. It's the solar system. I'm sure she will try to wear these even when she's not sleeping because They've just got such a fun pattern on them. And then for my middle girl, I got these waffle pants. They're from Zara originally, and they're in this kind of buttery yellow. I'm always on the lookout for Zara and H&M. H&M stuff is not all created equal in the kids, but sometimes they have like pretty high quality things. Um, so I would say the, the brands that I look for with kids, Zara, H&M, Hannah Anderson, and then the more like the next price point up, you know, the Riley and crew, the Kate Quinn, all of those ones that I've never purchased new, but I've thrifted a lot of them. Another little tie top for my middle girl. This is from H&M. And then the rest I think is for my youngest. She might be the one that I purchased for the most because her size is changing so frequently. And also because she is born in the summer and my other kids are born in the colder months. And so the size and the season that it is don't always line up with the stuff that I'm handing down. So it's kind of hit or miss. So sometimes I have to fill in the gaps for her and it's not all, it can't all be hand me down, even though I did save a bunch of things from my older girls for her. Things that I got, this little shirt, waffly, ruffle hem, Cute and simple. We'll go with all sorts of leggings. Little shorts. They're terry cloth, and I think they'll be super cute and comfy in the summer next year. Sleep shirt. Little onesie. Long sleeve, ribbed. This dress, which actually will probably be more like next winter for her, but it will be super warm. It's very heavy, and really, honestly, she'll be able to wear this and leggings and be good to go. And then last but not least, these little PJ pants. Suns, little sunshine. And that is everything. That is everything that I thrifted at the beach. It has been quite a while since I've gone thrifting. I typically go thrifting at the beginning of each season for my kids in specific, but it has been a very long time since I've thrifted anything for myself. And so that was really, really fun. I'm especially happy with the homeware items that I was able to find, those little bowls and this pitcher. I just cannot with those. I cannot, they're too much too cute and I need to go lie down. So that is, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go film another YouTube video, but I'm so glad that you're here. I'm so glad that you made it to the end. Thank you so much. And I would like to know what is the best thing that you've ever thrifted? Please drop it below and I'll see you in the next one. I just can't, I just cannot with these things. Please come back to me, Joy. Joy, can you hear me? Postpartum state. This is Rachel. I need you. It's worse. It's only getting worse. The more I touch it. So I just thought,